Hi, this is Linda Calloway coming to you from my basement. I watched Jen yesterday and I got jealous because she had other people with them and they were having so much fun. I'm bringing you homemade stamps today. Um, you can use them. I watched Jen's video yesterday using the uh, stencils and it was so much fun. But having Michael and having Morgan and others in the room was more fun and I'm here alone so I'm a little jealous. I think next week I will try to uh, do it with somebody else. I'm trying something new and I'm not sure it's going to work. My phone keeps telling me to turn it, to rotate it, but I don't know if that's going to work. With the tripod, when I had it sitting to the side, it wouldn't turn down for me to look at the artwork. So I built a tower today, and I'll show you. It's a tower of boxes of my art supplies. And I was hoping that if I put the prop my phone up there, it will look down upon the um, project that I'm doing. I want you to have a better view of what my hands are doing. And if it works, that's great. If it doesn't, I tried. I, I'm an older, non-techie woman, and I'm doing my best. Uh, handmade stamps are a lot of fun. You can buy commercial stamps, all kinds of commercial stamps. I mean, you can buy the foam ones like this. You can buy the plastic ones like this that are clear that you can put on the acrylic blocks. I've got some others. Oh, you can buy the rubber, red rubber ones that are put on wood. And those are great. You can do a lot with those. You can <clears throat> add to your uh, paintings, to your journal pages, to your artwork. But everybody has their own mark. If you haven't found yours yet, maybe you will later. For some reason, I like a lot of spirals. A lot of the symbols that I use kind of look like petroglyphs. They're interesting to me. The hand is used universally in almost all cultures. I like to use the hand. We may try to cut one of those out and see how it does. I want to make this easy for you. I'm going to be using ink today. And I've got these little bitty distress inks. And the reason these are good to use is because they're small. And that is backwards, isn't it? Um, they're small. And you can do uh, pat them over larger areas, and they work out well. OK, let's just get started. Um, hopefully, this is going to work. And if not, um, it's Morgan's fault. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what's happening. When I practiced it, it did fine. For some reason, it does not want to let me put it up here and show down on here. Um, I've got to turn it. Now, I think it's going to work now. Remember, I'm a work in progress, and I want you to see what I am doing. And all you see right now is my big stomach. Okay. First of all, I want to show you this. This came from Walmart. It's a package of adhesive foam sheets. They're not expensive. I don't have a price for, uh, on this. They come in all these different colors. You can cut them out. They have the sticky back on them. You can cut them out and use them to make all sorts of craft products. It doesn't matter what colors these are. Not at all. I'm going to start cutting out some of these with um, my plain old scissors. And well, hopefully you'll be able to see. You can see I've already cut some circles out of this. I thought I had plenty of battery power, but I just got a message that I have low battery power. And I, I apologize for that. If this live stops, it's not because I turned it off, but it's because the battery just went out. Okay. 
When you cut these things, you can draw on them first with a pencil or a marker if you want to. Let's cut out a star. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do this wonky on purpose. And you go, well, sure you're going to say that because it is wonky looking. No, I like wonky stars. In fact, this one may be too traditional for me. I'm going to make it more out of shape just because that's how I like my stars. Is it okay if yours turns out perfectly? Sure. Is it okay if it turns out wonky? Sure. And if you don't like it, redo it. This phone is inexpensive. Now you can print it just like that, but it works out better if you put it on a piece of cardboard. This cardboard barely fits on this. It sticks out a little bit. That's not going to matter. What does matter are all these extra pieces. So I am going to peel the adhesive back off. You know, some things are easier said than done. And put it down on the cardboard. Then I'm going to trim around it with my scissors. I'm not worried about this being perfect. The reason we trim it is when you put ink or marker or whatever you're using or paint to print with it, it may get on the cardboard and then it transfers. If you make it smaller here, then it's not going to be transferring onto your page. Let's make this star this blue color. Because these are so small, I can just turn it upside down and I can see as this red is going away how much is getting on there. Now because this isn't an artwork, I got a little bit on here but I'm not worried. I turn it over, put it down, and press down on it. And hold it for a minute. That's what most people do wrong with their stamp is they ink it and immediately turn it over and just put it down. Now I'm not going to get much of an... Uh, I'm sorry, I am uh, making you shake. I've got very little of that on the second one. So lay it down. Probably this is better to do this on a separate sheet of paper than your artwork where you're transferring the ink. Then turn it over, lay it down, and hold it. Press down on it. And lift it up. Actually, the second print is darker than the first one. Now, I don't know if this one's going to print. Probably won't. It did a little bit. It's a ghost print. I like that wonky star. We could make one that is nicer if you wanted to. Let me show you how my spiral came out and then I'll show you how I make it. So let's do it pink just because. Take your time to ink it. Turn it over. Press it down and hold it. Now, I really like it, but it's a little bit difficult because you're cutting out as you're going around. Let me show you how we do it. First of all, I need a medium-sized circle. I'm going to draw it in with this marker. Now, when I cut it out, I'll follow that line. Also, when I cut it out, I'm going to cut away this black part because we do not, we have to cut away some of this in between to see the spiral. If we just cut along that line, then it's not going to be the spiral. We have to remove a part of this. Notice that when I'm cutting, I'm turning. It just makes it easier when you turn if you cut. And now I have to go back to this part. And I'm going to go on the outside of this black line and go around. 
And as you get toward the center, it gets trickier. But it's not too hard, especially if you just keep turning and turning the phone. This one is probably going to be better than that first one because I didn't draw on it. Now I'm going to come back to where I started and cut on the other side of the black line and remove that. And hopefully this will be a better spiral than the first one I made. I'm not totally unhappy with the first one. It's right inside. Yes, and this is a little tough coming around. And I'm going to have to take this off. This is a little tough. Take that out. I need some more out of that center if I'm going to get that little... I need some little bitty scissors. I don't have any down here with me. Maybe this will work, maybe not. Everything's an experiment. I like doing my own stamps just because they're unique. That's not the best cut in the world. You can cut these with an X-Acto knife, but that's only adults. Do not let the children around it. I was doing a printmaking thing with the uh, Sama with children, and I had my X-Acto knife out turned around and a nine-year-old was about to pick it up, so it went in my pocket immediately. I do not trust young children and exactos, because I don't want blood in public. That's a joke. You can laugh at that. Okay, when I'm getting ready to put this down, I'm going to move it over and kind of turn it around there. Okay, we're going to call that good. Now I'm getting off that extra cardboard here so that when I print it, I'm not going to see the overprint. If I did that one in the pink, I'm going to do this one in the orange. What are your symbols that show up in your artwork or that you like? I told you I like the spiral, I like the hand. I like um, zigzaggy lines. Kind of like Chevron, but those aren't petroglyphs. Petroglyphs kind of things. Oh, look how different it is. And it's really rough right there in the center. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is. And it is going the opposite. Well, let me see. Yeah, it's going the same way. I would have to trace it backwards to do that. In fact, I'm going to show you what I did over here to make a um, heart. And I haven't glued it down yet because I wanted you to tell me what I did that not necessarily wrong, but I cut this out. And then I laid it down and traced it and cut another one out. Then I took the center out of it. But I made a mistake on this because when I traced this, I forgot to turn it over. If you're doing half of a heart and you don't turn it over, you end up with two halves going the same way and the stickies on the wrong side. So I recut it. So I just cut a half a heart because I knew I wanted to cut something out of the middle. Okay, I'm going to lay this one down. And peel this off and set it down. Okay, let's see if we go this side. And now this one I'm going to put it together in the middle. These uh, lines where I cut it will show up, but not a lot. So when I ink it and print it, you'll see that they do show up. But not a whole lot. Try when you're putting them down to match them up here, and they'll be less visible. You can add lines to it. I have this little tool right here that's a dotter, and it's got different size dots on it. I have this tool right here that has the needle tool and this, but you know what I found that makes the best thing? It's what you've got at home, just a regular pencil. The duller pencils work better. You don't want them super, super sharp. 
So I'm just going to come and I'm pressing pretty hard on this. And I'm going to make a curvy line. Curvy lines are another one of my marks that I like a lot. One of the ways that I discovered what marks I liked more than others was doing zentangles. If you don't know what zentangles are, you should look them up on the internet. Uh, I was doing zentangles before I even knew what zentangles were. I was just using a fine line marker and making all these elaborate designs and somebody said, oh, you're doing a beautiful zentangle. And I said, what's a zentangle? She said, what you're doing. So you can look it up and find out. Now I'm going to trim this away. And th what I'm using for cardboard is matte board because I matte a lot of my watercolors and my drawings. And I don't think I want that connected. I'll make it a separate one. So, but you can use regular cardboard. You can use cereal boxes. You can use whatever you have. If you try to turn these without taking the sticky off and print them, I'll show you right what I mean with this one. I'm going to try doing that. Just take this little one. Oh, I've got it on cardboard already. But because it's tiny, it's hard to put down and print. But if you're trying to print this without it being on a backing, it's tough. Oh, I like that. You see the line in the middle? Let's print this larger heart and see what it turns out. Now, I don't think I would make artwork just with these stamps. I think I would incorporate them in an existing artwork. Remember, you've got to hold it down for just a second and pick it up. Ooh, those lines are a little bit visible, but not much. I like what I did with that plain old pencil. In fact, this is an old pencil. It's got clay or something on it. But by incising these lines in there, you get something more interesting and more personal. This one's fine. I like that one better. And I'm going to set it to the side. I'm going to show you a two-part stamp that I've already made. This one, I just drew a little face stamp. Here's the circle. I just drew two lines. A nose. I don't know if you can see this very well with the pencil. Cheek and the mouth. That's all I did. If you want these eyes to not print either, you can kind of, oh, that's going to be good, kind of poke them out like this, and those won't print. This is the outside of my sun. I'm going to get new paper. This is the outside of my sun. I'm going to print it yellow. And then you can look at it and see where you're getting it. Now I know a lot of you probably don't have stamp pads. That's okay. You can use markers. Children's markers work great. Ah, I like that. And see, that's how I got those lines on the side. I just used the pencil and ran around the outside where you have those little indents, it's not going to print. And I looked for my <laughs> markers today and just couldn't find them. You would use the same thing. You would just take the marker and color over these and then pick them up. And actually it helps if you've got to put your breath on them because your breath will re-ink them. And it just has enough moisture in it to help in printing. Now, this is going to be upside down to you. I should have turned it around. Now, we have a two-step print. I'm going to do a little cricket. I can do it again. Let me do it again right beside it and turn it toward you. Start with your yellow. If you don't like the yellow in the middle and you want the white showing, then we can cut away the inside of this. Outside. I don't know if this would be the corona of the sun or not. Maybe. There we got it. I got a couple of places right there that didn't print. Leave it. If you try to go back and fix that, you're going to make a mess. If you think you absolutely have to, 
Um, well, I don't know how you would. I'm going to put this one upside down so it's going to be right to you. Good up. Now let me print him again without the background around him. And you will see that the indents will stay white on the paper because I haven't overprinted it with the yellow. Here we go. Now what can you make? Almost anything you can think of. I like to use these kind of things in conjunction with others. Like you have a piece of paper you've already printed and then you print on top of it with some of these, maybe in black. You know, I can't even see the ink that's on this one. Um, I have a little piece right here. There we go. I cut this one out. I don't know what shape that is. It's kind of a triangle with the bottom missing on it. Let me do this in orange and see if I can get this around the sun. I don't know if it's going to fit around that curve or not. I haven't tested it. Not too bad. Now we can keep printing. Have you seen books that use block printing as the way they illustrate it? This would be a wonderful idea to illustrate your children's art. If they have to illustrate a story, for Michael, your children that are homeschooled, it would be an easy way for you to do illustrations that you can reproduce. Because if it's a story about the sun, you can keep printing these on different pages and print it over and over again. And what did the sun say? What trouble got in it? Maybe a cloud came in and destroyed him. You can come up with all sorts of stories to go along with your original stamps. Now, stamps aren't limited to foam. Here's one that I purchased. And they can be used together. Let me come into pink because it's a different color. Remember I said I prefer the homemade stamp, but that doesn't mean you, do, you have to use them all by themselves. Oh, cool. I don't know what those are in the story if you're making it out of it. You can make some very simple homemade stamps using a hole punch and a piece of this foam and just punch out holes and then you can use it repeatedly. Another thing you can use is plain old cardboard. That really peeled off well. Sometimes it doesn't do it that well. But I'm going to come in with this blue just because I can reach over and get it. Oh, this is going to be neat. It's going to look probably like a leaf over here on the side. Now remember, you can just stamp it and go, but it does better if you press it down and hold it for a second or two. Oh, I like that a lot. But it didn't get this part that I wanted, so I'm going to come back here and do that again. When you're tearing it off, sometimes the cardboard, the paper on the first face of it doesn't always peel off. Hmm. It didn't tear this time. I, don't, I think you can see that pretty well. It printed just slightly here, but I wanted it to print better. Now, this I'm just stamping. Let me show you the difference between printing it and holding it and just stamping it on there. Let me see. That's doing pretty good. You get a really nice, interesting pattern that way. Could you over stamp it with something else? Could you put that in the background and then come over it? Of course you can. And let's try this spiral. Except I kind of went backwards. I should have used the lighter color first and then come in with a darker color. Now, if your stamps get dirty and you want to clean them off so that you can use a lighter color, see this? You can see all those lines through it, and it's still interesting. But if you wanted to go really light, it's going to be hard. You can use ah, the magic, magic baby wipes. You can wipe this off and go to a lighter color. I don't wipe it off until I'm going to use it on a lighter color. You can always go 
and wipe it off before you use it. Give it a second to dry because I've reactivated that ink on there. I can probably get another stamp out. Oh, I've got a fairly good stamp. See, it's even darker than that one because I reactivated it with the baby wipe. Now, all sorts of things you can use. This is just a piece of PVC pipe. I don't know if this is going to stamp up very well. It makes a really good stamp. Hmm. Oh, it's very little. Oh, I see there's a ridge right there. This is smoother. Let me try this. This is going to make a bigger rim. Yeah, a little bit bigger. You can make overlapping circles. Can you use it in conjunction with the spiral? I don't know if it's large enough or not. It does well. Maybe you would want to go darker. Let's try the darkest one I have right here is the blue. Now you can layer these up and make your own story, use them in conjunction with other papers. And what does it mean? It means whatever you want it to. I didn't get that centered, but that doesn't bother me. Let's see if it goes around that stamp that I did. Oh, it goes around really well, actually. Other things you can use. I just happen to just find that. These little cups. You find these at Walmart and different craft stores. I don't think that's going to do real well, but we'll see. Didn't do bad. It's actually about the same size as that other one. I thought it'd be quite a bit smaller. It's not. And you can also turn it just a little bit to maybe get a better stamp. Let's try the bottom. There's a rim on here. Oh, that's not going to do real well. There's paint on there. Did better than I thought. So all of these different things that you can use. Now let me show you something that you can do to add to your artwork. I'm looking for this. I'm going to take these decorative scissors and I don't know that I like this. I'm going to try it and then we'll see if we like it. I think I, I would like it better just making my own. I'll cut that in a couple of pieces. Here's what I mean about making my own. I'm going to make this a little longer. And I'm going to set them down so that they're going to be in sequence. They'll fit together, but I'm going to leave a little space in between them when I glue them down so we'll have these wavy lines. Remember, I like wavy lines. Let's do three. Three is a good number. Remember, a lot of times in art, we like to use odd numbers. Is it a rule? No. It's kind of like a suggestion. It's not a rule. It's just big enough. Just barely. I'm going to get that big cardboard. Can you use your scraps that you end up with? I've got a bunch of different weird sized scraps. Of course you can. So when you end up with all those scraps, you can decide how you're going to put them together. Maybe just randomly. Now I need to find this one. I thought I kept them in place. I did. This one fits right there. I'll probably end up trimming that if it's on the end that sticks over. So I asked you before what your shape was. Have you been thinking about it? Do you know? One way to find what your shape and symbols are is to look at a lot of artwork, see what other artists have done, and see what you like. Experiment. Art is not about perfection. I think Jim mentioned that yesterday. We're not perfect. We're always striving and experimenting. Okay, I like that. I don't know if these, I'm going to trim those off. I don't think those are going to print well because they're hanging off. 
Now I'm going to leave this here because I want you to see what it looks like if it prints. And it, I'm thinking it might. This I don't like. It's ragged looking. It's not that interesting to me. So the decorative scissors were, was an idea that I had, but it didn't work out too well. It sounded good. You know how things look good on paper, they don't always come out right. Well, this, I'm going to have ragged edges facing each other, and we'll see what it prints. It may print out a lot better than I think it will. We'll just see. And I can always come in with this one and back to back put it over here, but I don't think I want to. So let's just print this one first and see what we like about it. These things in smaller sizes would make wonderful borders to go around your artwork. This is the orange color. Yeah, if they're not even on there evenly. But I don't mind that um, jagged edge in there. kind of like it. Okay. I don't know what color I'm going to do this one. I can do it in any color. I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over it with the yellow color. And randomly put some orange in there. So I'm going to have to kind of hurry on this so that it won't dry out and I can print, I can print it. But I'm not going to try to get the orange everywhere. I'm going to do it, do it randomly. more orange than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think I put that much orange on it. Let's try it again. I like this one. Kind of reminds me of Ripley Wave. Left one set time. Let's see how it does. I do like it. Okay. We're going to get a color that I don't have over here. Now the orange is probably going to interfere with this. I put down the yellow. I'm going to do random blue. And it should make some green. Now if the orange comes through, it's going to be kind of brown, isn't it? Ah, that looks like snake. The only thing I don't really like about it are those sharp edges right in there. But I don't mind it. It's kind of cool. Okay. So if you're doing a journal page and you want a border, that's what would be good about this. To come in here, ink up the handmade stamp that you made. And let me... Turn this paper and come in here and print the border. Now, if you're not really that sure about where you're placing it down, like where this is going to meet, you could print this on one colored paper, cut it out, and collage it to your journal paper. But the smaller ones like this, you can pretty well come up where you want. I think I need a star in here. Oh, I just looked at the bottom of this blue one. They're calling it Peacock Feathers. I guess that's a good name for it. You're going to find out when you reach for your colors, there's going to be some of them that are your favorite. And everybody has their favorite color. And turquoise or teal is one of mine. Here's the simple little makeup sponge. I don't know if it's going to print or not, but I'm going to put it on the ink pad. I don't think it's going to do well. 
She did better than I thought. Maybe the second or third time will work. It just keeps getting better as you get more ink on it. What did I say you could use if you didn't have ink pads? Yes, you can use markers. The way you use the marker is you hold the stamp in your hand, color over it with the marker, and then puff on it and press it down and print it. Now I'm going to do a combination print where I use some of these stamps in conjunction with a gel print. I know Jen likes to do gel prints, and I do too. And I've just got a smaller one here today to kind of show you. Oh, I forgot something that I wanted to show you. Just a minute. When we're talking about what you can print on, I just saw this sitting here. To print on and to print with are all sorts of household things. This is something we'll probably use with a gel print. And ah, now that's backwards, but that's the way anything you print has to be. If you're going to print words, they have to be backwards. I'll show you that in a minute. Let's get this pink one. And when we turn it over and press down, and hold it for a second, we get a neat five. Let's try it on this side. Now this, I don't know, when you're doing videos off your camera, sometimes they reverse. So this might be correct to you, and it's going to be so different because the other side of this is textured. Oh, that's cool. And it's either a backwards five or a forward five. I'm not sure, depending on your point of view. These come from the dollar store. A dollar. My grandchildren might play in with them. They would pull them out and then sometimes not put them back in. But they got really good at putting them back in. They like to manipulate them. But now I can put them in my art room and add giant letters and numbers to my artwork because I've got these two also. This is the uppercase letters. I've also got the lowercase letters. So I can use all of these in my artwork. Remember you can print them both directions. I like it with the texture. That's really pretty. It's kind of a basket weave. I like that a lot. Let me take um hmm Here's the S. Let's use the S for Sama. And we'll print it both ways. I don't know what color Sama is. Let's make it orange just because. Orange is a nice bright color. <laughs> I'm getting Liz. I'm getting my inks messed up here. I don't know where they're all going to. Let me sit down here so I can see. Isn't it funny how you can have things right in front of you and you can't find them? Here's the orange. It's really easy to see right here what part of this isn't neat because it's a yellow that we're putting the orange on. Put it down, hold it. Don't let it move. I think it moved a little bit. Well, that looks good. See, I think it looks backwards to you. Let's try the other side. I think this is going to be me. It's all textured. This is going to be the opposite direction of that other one. Oh, I do like that. It needs some other color behind it rather than just the white, I think. Now, I'm going to show you a small gel plate that I have, just because it's fun. 
and then we can add some of the stamps to it. Uh, yesterday, Jen was showing you the stencils. I've got a couple in front of me. Take me. Which are neat. But if I put a color down here, then the stencil won't come out as white. What color do I want to put? Let's start light and go darker. That's the best way when you're painting. Oh, yucko. Don't want to waste it. Put it on the gel plate. Baby yuck. That's a weird color. It's a mustard color. Looking for my brighter. Now with a gel plate, you can just put one or two colors on it. Or you can put one color, or you can put more than one color. I don't know what goes with this gold very well. Maybe a coral color. Let's just go with a brighter yellow. Ooh, that is bright yellow. Let's kind of mix it with a little bit of yellow here, a little bit of gold I don't want to get too much on here because then you waste it. That, yeah, okay, it's, it's taking over that mustard color, isn't it? That's okay. Sorry, I have to look at my arm here. I'm reaching for paper. Is there anybody interested? and me doing a lesson in watercolor cards. When I go to buy cards, it is... Oh, there's something on top of this. Oh, that's cool. Look here. I saw those lines and I didn't know what it was. There is a piece of plastic on top of this. So it didn't print all of it because this piece of plastic was on top of it. That is a mistake that's kind of not a mistake, if that makes sense to you. Let's try pushing on this and see. I like the fact that that was there, and I was wondering why there was lines in my gel plate. No, it didn't turn again. I don't even know what that plastic was, but that's kind of cool. Let's um, put some other color on here. Let's just go with this mustard color. I've got to get this up because it's going to make a mess right here. Let's just use a little bit of the mustard right there in the middle. Now, I don't know if I could make my edges perfect again or not, but we'll see. If I want to preserve that white part, I can put something on it. Remember, because there was a little bit of plastic on it, let me get a piece of this paper right here and cut us out a wonky star and leave it in there. And it, when it prints, it will leave that as a void. I don't always draw for my stars. Sometimes I just cut. This is going to be very wonky. That's too wonky. You should probably draw a little bit. Like that, I think I'll have to then go back over here and back that. If that one's a little long, you trim it up. Now what's happening with all my trimming is they're fly, fly, falling on my floor. So I am going to have to come back and clean my floor. Let's see if we can get this back on there. Let's put this down here first. And let's see if we can get this right there. It's not going to match evenly. I didn't set up a registration. When you set up a registration, you usually put tape down or a square so that you won't move it. But it's going to be interesting. There we go. 
see my registration was very off, but now we have that void right there, that wonky star that didn't print. Okay, what else can we stamp on this? Now this is acrylic paint, and the reason that was kind of yucky, it's um, yellow ochre, and it is a earth tone color, and it's really kind of cool. Notice these little bitty, I don't know if you can see them from there or not, and I don't know if I can really show you or not. A little bitty flakes of darker color with some blue on there. They were left on the gel print, they don't, the gel plate, they don't always come off. And then they transferred, and that just gives it some, um, I don't know how to say, interest. I really like it. But I think I want to print some of this cardboard on there, and I don't have a black ink out. So I can get black paint. We can put it, oh, this is a, ah, this is phthalo blue. That would be a great contrast with that. So, I was looking for my painting knife and I couldn't find it, so that's I'm just saying, no, this is not going to work. For some reason, this one has dried up. I thought I had the lid on it good, but you don't always do it, so I'm going to have to go to another color. Well, you can go to a brighter blue. Now, I can make my gel plate function as a stamp pad. And let me show you how I can do that. This is very helpful when you're using the stamps and you don't have the right color stamp pad. So you, you could use a foam plate. You could use a piece of plastic, but really what works best. This gel plate. I don't know exactly what they're made of, but they're neat. Oh, Wouldn't this be good to make something in um, red, white, and blue for Americana? I like the stripes. I like the fact that they're not regimented, that they're not so even. And now this is printing out when I've got this thicker paint on here rather than just the um, stamp pad. It's showing up in here, this part, and I like it. I don't know if you would want to do that all the way around, but let's try. Okay, hmm. interesting. Now I'm making a pattern with this cardboard on the gel plate. So I could say, after I get this done, I could make a print from it. And I happen to have something small that would ma that makes good print. Okay, I've also got one of those punches where you punch out different things, and I've got little stars. I could punch out little stars and put it all around, and they would not be wonky. Uh, I'm trying to like that. I think I need a border over in here. And do I have border stamps? Yes, I do. We just made them. Let me see. Since I've got this paint out, I'll just go ahead and show you what it would look like if we use this dark blue for a border. But if I were making this a piece of artwork, I probably wouldn't use this dark blue. I would probably get another color for the contrast. And this is going to straighten up this line over here a little bit, too. Remember, take your time. Press it down. Looks like a little bit of green. It still had that other color in it. Remember when I came across it? I'm going to roll off this time instead of pressing it in it. And it probably will be a little smoother. Let's come up here and press it down. Are you getting any ideas? Are you getting inspired from this so that you can come up with your own ideas to make your own stamps, to make your own printing plates, to make your own art? I hope you are. We've got a little heart here. I don't want this heart to be blue. Let's make it pink. It's kind of hard to 
stamp these little bitty ones, but I'm using this little bitty stamp thing. Where am I going to go with this? Why not in the middle of the car? Cool. Let's put it someplace else. I don't like to use the color in isolation. I've repeated the blue. I've repeated the gold. I've repeated the uh, blue-green. So I should repeat the pink somewhere. And let's turn it this way. Now, will this end up, and see how the gold behind it changed that color. Would this be something that I am likely to use as an artwork? No. Probably, definitely not. But, I could use pieces of it in a collage. This might be a really good piece to use in a collage for some place. Now, I don't think I need to keep printing this. So, I really like these homemade stamps. I'm going to make more of them. Remember, I got the package from Walmart. And I... I'm going to try this painting now. That doesn't work well. That, uh, that was something that was suggested. Use your edge of your painting knife to make thin lines. It doesn't work well. And I don't want to be use it on my gel plate because it will cut it. But I could do it like this. That's not interesting. Not to me. I like texture. So. It might be interested if you're painting something and you needed that texture. And remember, we could change that color by using the stamp pad and go over it and it would be more green. So it might be interesting or something. But I hope I have inspired you. Let me take this paper right here and pull off what's on the gel print, the gel plate. Bunch of gunky paint here. I don't think that's going to have much. We had lots of texture from the cardboard. We need to put it back on there. And every time I do this, I am taking up paint. Remember how we took up paint yesterday using the stencil. She laid the stencil down and pulled it off. Yep. Cool. I like that. Is it a perfect print? Of course not. But we could put something else over here. I've only got about five minutes and I was going to pull these out and I didn't do it. It's just a little package of bookmarks. They're just rectangles of cardstock. So, let me get a fresh wet one and very quickly clean this plate off. You can leave all this gunk on there for the next print and it's interesting. Or you can use a wet one and clean it off. I'm using the wet one to clean it up. This one is a little bit drier because that one, my wet ones were needing a, a recharge, so I sprayed them with a little bit of water. And they work great, but they're a little bit wet. I think what I want to do is show you what you can do. Okay, I have a few that there, and I just see it right now. Here it is. Uh, you didn't see that blue paint on this. I'll probably have to stamp something on the back to get rid of that. Wow, look at that simple color. I need some more of this yellow right here on this one. I bet you didn't know you could print with paint. Oh, look at the orange. Where did that orange come from? 
pink and yellow make orange. Oh, that's actually pretty. Now, what could I do with this? Let's print some black on it. Let me take... We just got a few more minutes. Let me take some black ink and print a couple of spirals on it and we'll call it done. Again, if you're out there watching, I bought a starter pack of the golden paint, but I'm not using it for a demonstration. I like the golden paint a lot, but that stuff is expensive. That's why we're using these little uh, ink uh, pads that I got at Hobby Lobby on sale, and these other paints that I got that weren't that expensive. So, for demonstration purposes, we're going to use craft paint and other things. Okay. Now, there may be a little bit of blue show up in this because my brayer is blue, but I don't care. So to finish off this bookmark, bookmark makes the gift too. Now speaking of gifts, it's not going to be too long until the Santa gift shop is open again. Now there are some high-end things in the gift shop that are rather expensive, but we've got greedy cards, we've got affordable art that you can buy while you're there. So think about coming by the Santa gift shop and buying something. And Morgan's going to keep us abreast of when it's open. I've got some watercolor cards that I'm going to take down there. And, and several other local artists have got their work for sale there. So it's a good thing to buy local. And it's a good thing to buy local art. So keep that in mind. It's also a good thing to read. So here's your bookmark for the new use in your next book. Thank you very much for following along, and please keep Santa in mind. And if you're able to volunteer when everything opens up, then please do that also. Thank you very much. This is Linda. I'll be signing off, and I hope you don't get busy when I pick up my phone.